going to talk a little bit about is doing brushes. Um, I absolutely love brushes. I, most of what I do in my editing is all in Lightroom. Um, I, I don't do the burn and dodge in, in Photoshop. I'm not a fan of it just because in Lightroom it's, you apply it and then you can adjust it, whereas in Photoshop you can't. So I, I always do everything in Lightroom, so I don't even know. Every once in a while, if there's someone has really bad complexion, I will take it into Photoshop and use the healing band-aid, whatever thing it's called. But pretty much everything I do is in Lightroom. So um, what I'm talking about in this post that I did for this tonight is how I do eyes, because I get a lot of people that ask me how I do eyes. Um, the first thing that you do that I, that I do, um, Scott created a brush for me. So if you go into, where's the Lightroom? Here it is. If you go, if you wanna make the brush right now with me, you just click on the brush tool. You just click on that and it'll bring up all these little wonderful things over here. And you wanna make sure that this box over here is on the right hand side, cause that'll let you custom create your own brush. And basically to do eyes, um, I create a brush that you up the exposure. I don't want to mess with Scott, so let's do, do a new one. Um, I, you just do the exposure up a little bit. I can't remember exactly what mine's at at home. But um, I, I up the exposure and the brightness, and then I up the saturation, and then I up the clarity. This is down. The clarity's up like around 11 or 13. And then sharpness I, isn't up at all. It's just at zero. So that's my brush that I use just overall for eyes. And then how you save that is you click on, see this right here where it says custom? Yours might say something else. Click on the arrows. And down here at the bottom, see how it says save current settings as new preset? Click on that. And then it'll let you title it whatever you want. I just call mine eyes. And then you just save it. And then you have a brush that will do all those things all at once so you don't have to do a brush for each individual thing. Mine, or, mine the exposure is up a little bit. Um, not too much because you don't want them to look fake. Um, I just have a good starting point. Um, my exposure, I think, on mine is up like to like 23. Um, my brightness is um, about 40 is fine. I think mine's around 30. Anywhere from 30 to 40 is fine. Contrast, I don't have anything. My saturation is up to about 32. And then my clarity is up. Um, I think my clarity is only up to like 15 or 13. But you can just do those, as, just get a good starting point like for that. And then you'll actually go in and do the brush over an eye and see how you like it. And if you're like, oh boy, the brightness is way too high, you can turn it down a little bit and then resave it. So this picture here, oh, I've got the wrong. Okay, what I would do to do the eyes is I would zoom in. Come on. Why isn't the spacebar trick working? Oh well, I'll just come over here and do it this way. So I zoom in on her eye, and what I would do is I take my eyes brush and I go over the entire eye with it. And you can see this kind of is a little too bright. But if, if, it, if I, I find that most times when I use brushes, it will not be perfect the first time. And I always just go in here and you can adjust the entire amount right there. If you just have this little box here on the left instead of on the right where it, it compiles everything together and I can just go all the way down. Does it, can you see how it's changing? And if it's not enough, then I can get, make it even higher than what I had it. So I'll get it to where I, I think it looks good. And most of the time, that's all I do. And I can just leave it at that. And a picture like this, where I want a more dramatic eye, um, I will then do a new brush. So you click on new. If you just go automatically to a new brush, it will actually do that to your old thing. So you always want to click new. Um, then I do a negative exposure. And I make my brush smaller which is taking a minute to do it. I'm in basic mode right now. And it's just negative exposure, that's all it is. And I will adjust the exposure after I apply the brush because it's different for every picture. And you can see around the eye how there's a natural darkness around the iris. So I will go around and darken around the iris 
like that. And then I will darken the center of the pupil. Sometimes you can see the catch lights like right in her pupil, so it's hard to get it there. And then I will usually darken just right along the eyelashes, just because it kind of makes the eye pop a little bit more that way too. And then I adjust my exposure to get it to where, you know, that's obviously too dark. <laughs> so I get it to where I feel like it's, it looks, it looks, um, just pops the color a little bit more. And if the whites of the eyes here are look yellowy looking or gray looking, um, I have a, a brush that I created for, just for that that desaturates. So that's the saturation. So if you're going not into the standard mode but into the other, other mode, you take saturation all the way down to 100 and then I up the brightness just a tiny bit, like maybe to 20, 25. And that's what I do just, and then that gets rid, that makes the, the whites of the eyes really white and nice looking. But you can see the difference between the two eyes, how the other one just kind of pops. And if I want the, the, the middle of her eye to pop even more, I will take that original brush that I used to go over the whole eye, but just go into the middle of the iris where the color is. And then you can see on my blog, hang on. I have some examples of eyes that I've done. So you can see before and after. See, here's the before and after. And as you can see, the, the before and afters are very, very subtle. I don't like to overdo it because I think if you overdo it, it makes the eye look really fake. And I'm, I'm not a huge fan of that. There's the before and after of that one. This one um, is farther away, and all I had to do was just do the brush over once on the eyes. I didn't have to go in and do the line around her eyes because you don't see that from that far away. And see, here's the picture that I just did, and you can see the before and after. How dramatic her eyes, because that's the look I was going for for this picture. This one, you can see her complexion was pretty bad, so I took it into uh, Photoshop just to get like under her eyes and you can do all the blemishes though, like in the, the, the picture that I, sorry, that's my cell phone. The picture that I have in here, I did all of her blemishes, they're gone, and you can, I don't know if this will show it. No, it won't. And on my computer, I did it all with the spot removal tool. So you can, let me zoom back out all the way. Can you see all the circles? Yeah, and here, I'll show you the before so you can see. Oh wow. You can see all the stuff I took out on the pole and on her face. And I did all of that with the circle. So see, you can see where all of my spots are. And on, on her face, I did the heel circle tool because that just kind of blends it a lot better than clone. And over here, I did the clone because it, I wanted the, the lines and everything to match up. So, and one other thing with brushes that I just recently figured out, um, like when I, a, a tool that I love to use for people that have wrinkles under their eyes like me that don't like it to show in my pictures, <laughs> um, I will take the brush that's already made for you. It's called Soften Skin, right there. And, um, and I will just go like under there. She doesn't have hardly any wrinkles, so this isn't working very well on her. But I will go, you know, wherever there are wrinkles, I will go and get it out. And a lot of times, it's not enough. So if you click New, and you do the same Soften Skin one and go over it, it just overlaps over the old brush. So it will keep softening and keep softening and keep softening until you have like this porcelain, really fake looking skin if you do it too much. But um, I, I just discovered that that works. And so see, now I'm doing another brush and you can see it's doing it that much more, it's like getting that, that dark spot right there under her eye. So you can overlap brushes, like desaturate. Sometimes some people's teeth are so yellow that doing desaturate doesn't get rid of all of the yellow. And so if you overlap it, it just keeps taking out the color like until... Mm -hmm. Yeah, if you just do click new and just do a new brush every time, it just overlaps brushes.